understand you soon, it won't be long. Keep on, keep running. Today, we're making venison wellington. You heard what we're making. Let's get off this crappy background noise. Let's just use the road mic today. So, anyway, y'all might be wondering what wellington is. Well, I was recently scrolling for YouTube and you know what came in my recommended? Recommended. Recommended. Was Gordon Ramsay's signature dish, beef wellington. And I was like, oh man, this looks good. So I kept making and making it and it came out pretty well. And then this one, I was like, hmm, I'm flying up to my uncle to go deer hunting, and he's killed us a little spike the other day. What if we took some of that meat and made it up? But we didn't take that meat. We took a deer from last year. We cut off a little piece of its ham, its leg, and we decided, I'm going to make Wellington with this while he worked all day. So, Wellington is basically what Americans should love. It is an American dish, in my opinion. It originated in the UK, but I feel like it would be the perfect thing for Americans. It's like a gourmet burger, basically. It's so good compared... It's healthier than a burger, in my opinion. There's so much more protein, and it's real good. So, anyway, it's basically piece of tenderloin usually this time i use the ham off of a deer but usually it is a tenderloin the center cup of a tenderloin for of a beef loin it is very soft and tender and then you sear that and give it a nice glaze then you take a mushroom filling which is basically just mushrooms minced up very small and then you fry them to all the uh, water and vapor surround them which isn't that hard then you take some parma ham and you put that around it. You wrap it in some parma ham, you let it sit. Then you take some, usually you would take a crepe. I don't use a crepe in this recipe, but you wrap it in a few crepes. Then you roll up some puff pastry, wrap it in a puff pastry. Then you bake that baby. And there's the masterpiece that you call a Wellington. Now that's a lot of work you might be asking because it is a very hard dish to make. Now, Sorry, I had to swallow. But now, just think about this. This is Gordon Ramsay's. Gordon Ramsay. The best chef in the world, in my opinion. A guy with no filter, of course, but man, is he amazing. But it's his signature. Guys, get this. Get this. His signature dish. I know that's pretty complicated because it's Gordon Ramsay. But today, I'm going to teach you how to make venison wellington. Let's get right into it. Alright, first things first. First, you want to remove all silver skin and fat off your piece of meat. You're going to want to take that and throw it into a pot that you will be making your sauce in. In this recipe, I don't add any flour to my sauce, but I should have added some jelly, about 3 tablespoons, and 4 tablespoons of flour. To make it nice and thick like a gravy which would have tasted a lot better but i didn't but i'm telling you now so do that mix them in while it's boiling and make sure the flour breaks up and the jelly shall sweeten it but now let's continue to get to it all right first things first you're gonna want to add a full teaspoon of garlic salt sorry brain for a whole tablespoon of lemon pepper a full yellow onion and now a whole three tablespoons of olive oil now throw the onion and all the pork in there until they start to brown and it should start to look like this your onion doesn't have to be fully diced because you're gonna strain it later this is a very complicated recipe so i hope you guys are keeping up all right let's get into the next step so now you want to keep stirring them up till they start to brown and once they start to brown pour in half a bottle or a full bottle of red wine it's up to you if you like it I like to use half a bottle. Some people like to use a full bottle. Now you're gonna want it when it starts to boil, add a full carton of beef stock and stir that pretty well. This will help thicken it and give it a nice beef flavor. Now add some more salt, of course, some uh, thyme, and some lemon pepper, of course. 
Now let's just start the steam and you just want to let this simmer. Now here's where I tried to remove some of the onion and all the crap that was at the bottom and some of the foam that kept stirring up and just putting it in a bowl. But the, you can skip the set by pouring this through a strainer and under the strainer should be a bowl or something to catch all of yep, it. Go ahead. Then you want to mush those onions to get all of the flavor through, but you don't want chunks of onions anymore. And then you do want chunks of onions, but later you want to throw them back into a pan and throw them back in here, like I just did. Now that's into your sauce. You can do whatever you want with this. I put it in the side, and once I reheat it, I threw a stick of butter into it to make it more creamy and thick. But I should have just threw a few tablespoons of flour to make it thick enough. Like I've been repeating myself, I feel like. But I've done this recipe more after this video. So let's get into the mushroom filling. Alright, first you want to take one carton of white mushrooms and one carton of bello mushrooms. Chop them all up, throw them into a pan with a teaspoon of olive oil so then they don't stick. You smear that around. Now you want to keep stirring them until they get nice and crispy. Throw them into a strainer, push all that stuff out. And now let's get into putting this on parm ham. Before we move on, let these get the room temperature and throw them in the fridge for 15 minutes. All right, first you're gonna wanna lay down a few slices of parma ham, throw the mushroom filling on top of it, lay it out evenly, then put the mushroom, put some more parma ham on top of it, and then try to wrap it. Mine was oddly shaped, so just getting it to stick to it was the plan, since I can't use this shape. You want a round piece of meat, is the whole thing. So I rewrapped it to make sure it wouldn't leak out in the fridge just to be safe and it would stick together. Look at that, that's a nice little baby. Now, you just throw this down here. And you throw it in the fridge, you know? Oh, yeah, you also want to get your puff pastry out and roll that out. Roll out your puff pastry onto a thing of um, plastic wrap. Sticky, of course. And you want it to be thin, you want to roll it out. Once you roll it out, you want to take some egg wash, wipe the edges of it, and then wrap it up like this. Or some water. You can use water or egg wash. Either one works. I like to use water because it's cheaper. And I forgot to flip over my thing. I scorched it now. Save it for later. But when I throw it in the oven, it became mas a master of food. It was the king of food. The lord. You guys ready to see this thing? Heat your oven to 420 degrees, egg wash your thing real quick, bring your sauce to a boil, and throw this thing in for 30 minutes. And watch how it becomes a master. Look at this thing, how crispy it is. You know what else is very crispy? A B-roll. Alright, thank you guys for watching, stay slacking y'all, and have a great day, people.